Um, two billion, you agree, is the fixed sum. Um, Indeed, I, I think whoever wins the next election is the Treasury going to come along and say, here is more money. I don't think so, because the government of the day will be facing an appalling financial crisis, uh, because the country's finances <coughs> are in the most horrendous state. So what we've got to do, we've got to have a vision for legal aid. It's, it's all very well what the government is doing. The government are, are, are looking at a number of small schemes, the family law advocacy scheme, they're making small cuts in legal aid, BVT and police stations. All of these proposals, I think, are having a highly damaging impact on practitioners, on law firms, on advocates. And, and I don't see, when I hear ministers, I don't see any real vision for legal aid. Yes, I, I agree entirely with Willie Bark. It, it is one of the pillars of a welfare state. Uh, and that's why we believe passionately in legal aid, and we believe in what it does for access to justice. But we will, if we win the election, we're going to look at imaginative ideas to get new money into the legal aid budget. Now, I'll just give you very, very quickly four ideas we're looking at. We're looking at the contingency legal aid fund proposals put forward by the bar, which, if given proper seed capital, could well bring in about 40 million a year once it's up and running. And this would be money that I think would have to go into the Access to Justice Foundation to improve access to justice, not just sliced off the legal aid budget. But we're looking at extending, to a very significant extent, before the event insurance, for legal expense insurance. In Germany, 45% of the population are covered by legal expense insurance. Here, the figure is paltry. We're also looking at a very big idea, which I think is going to fill the law society with horror, it is the French system. In France, what happens is that every single uh, solicitor's client account money goes into one bank account. The client has access to it whenever he or she wants. The solicitor has access to it whenever he or she wants. But rather than having all the money from different solicitors spread around hundreds of bank accounts around the country, it all goes into one bank account guaranteed by the government. And the extra interest earned by putting a large amount of money into the markets every night, and we're talking about billions of money, it's a tiny percentage differential interest rate, but it's significant. And in France, it raises hundreds of millions of pounds. And I think this is an incredibly exciting idea. We're working on it, we're looking at it, but we cannot stand still. We have to have a vision for legal aid. And I don't think it's enough for Willie to say that uh, he cares about social welfare law, uh, and he wants to look at the cost drivers, and he wants to get better, better value for money. There has got to be a really determined effort to get substantial new sums into legal aid. Otherwise, I feel, all we're doing is shifting chairs on a sinking ship uh, and we're going to see access to justice uh, deteriorating in this country. So we've got to have a big idea and we're working on it uh, and we're buzzing with enthusiasm to try and put these ideas into place. <coughs> well, buzz, buzz. I can see it now. I can see it now. Uh, very little shifting about by the young legal aid lawyers, but certainly not discovered from some of the people who run company run firms. Uh, because of course that means interest that they're getting on some of these accounts. Well, I am an outsider, how can I possibly speculate? But um, does anybody want to uh, pick up on anything they have heard thus far? Um, yeah, I think it's appalling that you're going to take people's damages who have been injured and, and put it elsewhere. Um, it's been established for donkey's years that people should recover full compensation if they're injured. And now what you're proposing under a class scheme is to take them is to take the money away. I think you said they'd have access to it, right? Well, well no, he, he's on the CLAF. Oh, CLAF, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. don't know if you've had a chance to see the, the, the bar paper on, on setting up the CLAF. That was rejected quite a few years ago when issues the, the, relating the to... The original one was rejected, but Guy Mansfield's come up with a, a, a new set of proposals, and he believes that it could, over a period of time, raise sufficient funds to bring £40 million extra into the legal aid budget. Look, none of these ideas by themselves are going to solve the, the, the problems of legal aid. But given the, the country's uh, financial crisis, is more money going to become available? I would say, no, it isn't. So we've got to find ways of getting new money in. A and we've got other ideas as well. We've got, I think it's, it's, it's essential that the, we, we bring in the Pluto Pays concept. So in other words, if there's regulatory failure by a regulatory body or by a government department, why shouldn't they contribute to the legal aid fund? They don't at the moment. Why aren't we expanding greatly cost recovery orders? I'm conscious that we're still on the first question, but I have clearly a couple of people would like. I'll take um, you two and then we're moving on. I just wanted to introduce a bit of context because the legal aid 
bill of two billion is, is quoted, and it is in itself a lot of money, but we have to bear in mind that total government spend yearly is 630 billion, the NHS is 95 billion. We hear today that the Ministry of Defence wastes 2.5 billion a year to do with uh, orders that have gone wrong. So in that context, and context is absolutely everything, a legal aid budget of two billion, I would say, is a low amount of money, and there must be huge amounts of savings that can be made elsewhere, and that must be right. shadow spokesman really are only going to raise relatively small amounts of money. Willie, uh, on behalf of the government, recognises that legal aid money spent probably saves the government money spent in other areas of its budget. We've had this conversation a long time now, but the, the experience, I think, of all of the, the practitioners in the room is that money spent on legal aid, tackling social exclusion, saves money spent on prisons, saves money spent on the healthcare budget, saves money right across all of the big spends in government. And what I find disappointing, really, from this debate is it seems to me that we expect leadership from government and from aspirant government. And it, it really is time that we tackle this issue of what we get for the legal aid budget, because it shouldn't be locked into the box of there's two... You know, the, the answer is two billion. The question is, what are we spending on? We should be spending more, and we would, I think, in a way, be getting value for money. But it's such a difficult thing to prove, such a difficult thing to tackle, that you're never going to get the Treasury to listen unless that work is done. And it seems to me that we've got the people around the table who could make that, who could commission that research, and we could see it done. Because otherwise, we're going to be stuck within the box, and that's wrong. Thank you very much.